How you doing, everybody? Uh, my name's Anthony, and uh, I've been kind of stalling doing this video. It's my first one. Uh, I really didn't want to do this video. I still don't. I even tried to pass this information on to a few other people that made videos. But uh, I guess I'm supposed to do it. Um, through my research and my prayer and my study, I've come across some information that I feel is very important important and that I feel like God wants people to know this. I think it will help many people on different issues such as, you know, which version of the Bible to use or if it matters or not, uh, the whole Hebrews Roots movement, and uh, a lot of other issues that people, you know, might be wondering about. Even the fact of the, the, the validity of the Bible itself. So, here we go. Um, God created everything including all people, all of our hearts, minds, bodies, and spirits. So every thought we have ever had, or will have, was his first. I reference Ecclesiastes 1, 9, where it says, The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. This verse has led me to many understandings. Uh, one that there is nothing new in this world it, it's all from God and we can't come up with anything he hasn't come up with so the devil's plan is just like the Ouroboros the, the serpent consuming its tail he destroys us through us consuming ourselves through sin um, you know the only thing that changes are the details the devil is in the detail that phrase um, you know, in the contract with lawyers, read the fine print. You know, in the old times with the stories of a, of a genie, which were the jinn, which were demons or fallen angels, whatever you want to call them, all different beings, but all doing Satan's bidding. How uh, a person would wish for a ton of gold, and the, the genie or jinn would then drop it on their head, killing them. You know, uh, be careful what you wish for they would drop the 2,000 pounds directly on their head because they didn't specify where they wanted it. And that basically also shows how we you know we kill ourselves through sin. How sin comes back on us and destroys us. And uh, basically it's all in the words. You know, I, I started looking at words and, you know, basically words are were kind of like symbols you know I don't know if you know anything about you know the the secret societies uh, the Illuminati uh, Bohemian Grove uh, Skull and Bones all these uh, and all these other ancient orders well after the Tower of Babel God separated all the men in their languages you know to, to put off their evil doing after they were trying to build the Tower of Babel. Well, to, for these people to communicate still and to do it in secret, you know, they use symbols. Symbols is a language, like hieroglyphics, but also modern day symbols. And they say symbols, why they use them is because they reveal and conceal at the same time. They reveal thoughts, meanings, messages to those who are initiated, and they conceal the true meaning to the people who are not. They just see a picture. Um, and once you study all these images and all these corporate logos, they all go back to Babylonian satanic witchcraft. I mean, every one of them. It's ridiculous. I own a small business. I don't need a picture for my business. But these people do because they're communicating with each other. You know, it's the devil putting his mark, so to speak, on uh, his property. And, uh... So... But even through all these uh, plans that they used, the devil's plan, it, anything he thought of, God was his thought first. So really he is using the devil and his plan to serve God. He uses it to test loyalty, to allow judgment, to serve as an example, and many other ways that we probably can't even comprehend. Uh, so since everything is first from God, this includes our thoughts and words. 
and the Bible is literally the living, breathing Word of God. We see in John 1.1, 1, 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Well, it, it's saying right there that the Word was God. He is the living Word. And words do mean something. I mean, our whole society is ruled by words. You know, the legal system, courts, laws, everything. It's all first a thought, then goes to paper, and then a signature. So these are all decrees. Even when we vote, supposedly, you know, if the elections are true, it's, uh, it, you know, it's all words. The ballots, us voting, and the person gets a title, and then that grants them the authority. Well, if you know anything about these secret societies, then one of their favorite saying is uh, hidden in plain sight. And most of us think, you know, that study this, you know, we know, we think we know what that means for the most part. But I'm here to tell you that it's even more plain than you could possibly realize. Uh, words are the same as these symbols. And, uh, Here's one example. This is uh, with another saying that the Freemasons like to use. Albert Pike, if you don't know who he is, um, he was like the Pope of Freemasonry. He was a Confederate general, founder of the KKK, uh, started Satanism in America, or at least, you know, started making it popular and known. And uh, he has a saying on his book, Morals and Dogma. This is like an 800 and some page book that's only supposed to have like people you know in Freemasonry and it says right on the cover order out of chaos and I have to give some I have to give credit where credit's due I first saw this on a video from Pastor Mike Hoger who I love and you know he's a tremendous teacher and he's helped me so much I love his videos and I, I recommend them to anyone to check them out but uh, he would say that the word chaos literally meant the abyss when you looked it up. Well, I didn't stop there. I, I, you know, I had looked up. I said, "Well, I wonder what order means." You know, if, if it's in the words. And when I looked up the word order, you know, I had a lot of uh, the regular definitions we would think: a command, uh, legally binding, charge, demand. Require, bind, compel, and join. But one definition it had, and you have to read them all. It's like the fine print in the contract. Every definition that listed is equally a meaning of that word. No one definition is more fitting than any other one. And one definition I found for the word order was one of the nine grades requires of angels. So literally on the cover of the book, they tell you who, the, who they're dedicating themselves to. And this is, again, only for the initiates that are, you know, and the book plainly says in, inside it that, you know, that only the, the degrees above the 30th level get to know the truth. They intentionally lie to their lower mem members for a cover. And uh, it literally says, order out of chaos, they worship the, the greater choir of angel out of the abyss. That's, well, that's Satan. That's who they worship. So little time went by and I felt God still telling me to look up these words you know I just felt it so every word and it just seemed silly because I you know I was like everyone else I thought that I knew the meaning of these words and uh, I'll give you a prime example we always hear about in Genesis the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil well, I looked up the word tree and who would ever do that we know what a tree is right but I was just curious I mean I know God uses metaphors and you know but I believe every word. Every word was perfectly placed there for a reason. So I believe that when he's saying something, it's on multiple levels. He's God. I mean, I believe he brought it down to as basic a level as he probably could for us to understand. But I still think it's so multidimensional, that the, the Bible, that on all kinds of levels. So I looked at the word tree, and I was amazed. You know, the, you know how the basic definition, a perennial woody plant having a trunk and usually a distinct crown. So that was a little interesting. But then it said a beam, post, stake, or bar used as a part of framework or structure. And it also said then the cross on which Jesus was crucified. So literally the definition of tree is the cross on which Jesus was crucified. And then I thought about the stake and I'm thinking, well, maybe that's why, you know, in the movies, the, the stake to the vampire heart kills him. Because it's literally a tree is the cross on which Jesus was crucified. 
But that's not all. I saw another definition and, and my jaw dropped. It said, a figure that branches from a single genealogical root. You know, like as in a family tree. Well, a tree is one that comes from one other, that's it. Like none of us on earth, we all have parents, grandparents, great-grandparents. Well, who is only from one source? There's only one above him, or came from one. That's Jesus. That's Adam, all the sons of God that directly came from God. So the tree of life is Jesus Christ. The tree of knowledge of good and evil, well, that would be Satan. I started looking up some other things I was curious about. Like, we live in the Milky Way galaxy. Well, one definition of Milky is meek, timid, spiritless, or spineless. Non-Christian religions. Uh, then I looked up Way, and of course it had a thousand definitions, but if you look at them all and really look, one, you know, they, they have a lot of meaning to it, like road, path, or highway, but also says opportunity to advance, freedom to do as one wishes. So the Milky Way is a spiritless, spiritless or spineless place where we have the freedom to do as one wishes, but we do have the opportunity to advance. And a galaxy is a splendid assembly, especially a famous people, a collection of stars. And in the Bible, we also know stars to mean angels. So I thought that was very interesting. I looked up the word breath, spirit, or vitality. I looked up the word word, the word of God, it says there. Second person in the Trinity. This is what the dictionary is telling us. It's confirming that all this is true. Um, and then there was an interesting quote there that I, I couldn't, well, I could believe it was there, but I just thought it was perfect. It said, it was a quote by Rudyard Kipling. It said, for words, like nature, half reveal and half conceal the soul within. Once again, reveal and conceal. They're telling you right there. These people, you know, these spirits, they love to flaunt their intelligence. They try to emulate God and all their multidimensional speaking. And so this is, uh, I guess, how they, they show off to one another in their intellect. Uh, the word temple, something regarded as having within it a divine presence. Building used by fraternal orders, especially Knights Templar. A device in a loom that keeps the cloth stretched to the correct width during weaving. And then here's where other definitions come in. Any place or object regarded as a shrine where God makes himself present, especially the body of a person who has been sanctified or saved by grace. Our body is the temple of God. That's literally a temple. That's what it means. Uh, another good one was image. You know, we're made in the image of God. And in Revelation, it talks about, you know, the image of the beast. Well, I had a lot of definitions, reproduction of the form of a person or object, object, an optical reproduction formed by a lens or mirror, and then a lot of other ones, but then it says individual, a mortal, person, a soul, dead ringer, there's a mathematical definition that if you want to look that up and, you know, you know a lot about math and how, you know, even the Bible mathematically and numerology and, and with numbers is even true. But then I saw a word, well, it had picture, photo, copy, replica, counterpart, metaphor, simile, fetish, conceit, figure, idol, icon, talisman. But then I saw the word clone. It literally means clone, an image. You know, does that have to do with us? You know, our, our DNA and God, or, or even in the end times especially, you know, is the beast a, a clone? A clone of a... Uh, past Antichrist like Nimrod. I'm not. I'm not saying that's definitely it, but it's definitely interesting. They use the word image, and image literally means clone. One of its definitions. I looked up the word serpent, creature that tempted Eve, Satan, subtle, sly, or treacherous person, fierce, or firework that rise while it burns, a brass wood, deep voiced wind instrument, snake. I mean, it's telling you, why would it be mentioning Jesus and God and Satan in the dictionary if they weren't real? They, they're not using Mickey Mouse. They're not using, uh, you know, 
Daffy Duck, they're using these people or these figures because they're real. What else? Uh, I looked up the word grace, unmerited and free favor of God shown towards man. Ele elegance and beauty of movement, form, expression, or proportion. Divine assistance and power given to man in spiritual rebirth and sanctification. That's God's grace. The word eight, like eight of the fruit. A-T-E, eight. Goddess who makes men blind so they will plunder into guilty acts. Goddess of criminal rashness, rashness and its punishment. I looked at the word politic. Artful, shrewd, crafty, unscrupulous, cunning, smooth, suave, bland. Another favorite of mine is government. You break that down, govern means to control, ment or mental, of or relating to the mind. So literally governmental means you know, mind control. What's all the governments of the world, that's their only function is to control our minds, to believe all the nonsense, to go along with their story. You know, it's not them against them, it's all of them against us. The word lamb literally says Jesus, person who lacks knowledge of evil, meek, innocent, good, without resistance. Matrix, since we know we often say we're in the matrix here, the womb, mold or die, an enclosure within which something originates or develops. A uh, dragon, mythical monster, traditionally represented as a gigantic reptile having lines, claws, the tail of a serpent, and a scaly skin. Uh, it also is the international dragon class of yacht. Manifestation of Satan or a attendant devil. It's also a constellation twisting around the north celestial pole lying between Ursa Major and Cepheus. Draco. Unpleasant, fierce woman. Beast, animal other than human, four-footed mammal, especially horse or bull, savage nature, brutal, uncivilized, filthy person, monster, barbarian, fiend, swine, ogre, ghoul, sadist, cruel. I, uh, I looked up the word adversary, literally said Satan, the devil. I looked up the word angel, and, you know, had a lot of different definitions, but one, I, I, again, my jaw must drop. A financial backer of an enterprise, especially a dramatic production or a political campaign. Well, how do they influence us today? Through politics and movies. I mean, entertainment, just like they always have. Plays and, you know, the, the gladiators of old. Looked up the word giants, hulk, whale, behemoth. There's a word in the Bible. Colossus, Goliath, another character in the Bible. Monster. Anomaly, a large star, very bright. Titanic, monumental, mammoth, gargantuan, ogre, titan, leviathan. Marked by exceptionally great size, magnitude, or power. So the giants of old, the men of renown, in Genesis 6. These were giants in more ways than one. But it even mentions, you know, behemoth, leviathan, and goliath. Uh... I heard Chuck Missler, another great teacher, if you haven't seen any of his videos, I recommend them highly. But he was, uh, I think he got stuck on a little part here. He was saying that the translators of the Bible had gotten the, the word saint wrong, that the, the Hebrew word really meant angels there. Well, again, it, it doesn't matter what language. God is the author of all languages. So they're all perfectly created and they're all true. If you look, look up the word saint, one of the definitions is literally angel. Uh, name. Oh, I was looking at the part of the, in, in Revelation where, you know, it was talking about the beast and count the number of his name and the number of a man. So I was looking up count. Noble, nobleman in various European countries corresponding to a British Earl. Any of various officials in late, in the late Roman Empire Kings in early Middle Ages, man who was received, man who has received an honorary papal knighthood from the Pope in recognition of good deeds. Occupant, state officer, the total number counted, a blood count, calculate, compute, cast up, check, score, reckon, 
enumerate, total, add up. The word number. Symbol or word used to represent a number. Numeral or series of numerals used for reference or identification. Large quantity, multitude. Person or thing singled out for a particular characteristic. Add up or total, select company of people. Item or Item of merchandise for sale, group, classify, sort, separate, amount. The word man, I looked up man. One who swore allegiance to a lord in the Middle Ages. A person, human being, regardless of sex or age. Mankind, and here's an interesting definition. Any member of the extinct species of the genus Homo, such as Java man, Heidelberg man, and Solo man. Well, I was like, what's that? So when I looked up, uh, I looked up Solo Man, I believe it was, and it had a it had a reference to uh, Neanderthal. And I thought that was interesting because I just saw an article the other day how uh, it's, I believe it was Yale or Harvard. I think it was Yale. They wanted they were looking for a mother to give birth to a, a clone of a Neanderthal baby. They think they can clone the DNA and have a woman give birth to it. Who knows? I mean, so much weird stuff's going on right now. Uh, the definition of the word name. Nickname, title, appellation, term, handle, denomination, reputation, fame, distinction. Christen, baptize, renown, label, entitle, nominate, choose, commission, mention, identify, select, appoint, key out. So, you know, if you count the number of his name, it's the number of a man. Uh, you know, you could start putting some things together there. I'll leave that to you for whatever you guys think. And there was tons more. I mean, but literally, basically, my, my message to you, uh, the word hypocrite, that was another one. Pretender, a Pharisee, phony, charmer, sweet talker, deceiver, trickster, an actor. The hypocrites of today, the actors, the pretenders, the one who influence us. It's all propaganda. It's all propaganda to take you away from the truth of God and the word of God. You don't need to learn multiple languages. We know the language we know. We have a translation of the Bible. It's the King James. That's the only one you use. You don't need to know Hebrew roots. I'm here to tell you that we don't even know the language we think we know. We only halfway know it, if that. So all you need is the King James Bible. And a dictionary. You don't even need the dictionary. You can go right online. I use the free uh, free online dictionary. But all you have to do is look up these words if you're not sure for a better understanding. And really, you don't even need that. But you know, it helps. You know, the Bible's pretty plain if you really read it. But for a better understanding, you know, or to be sure of things, you, that's what you do. I mean, if people don't understand something, it's not because they're not smart enough to understand it. They just don't know the definitions of the terms in the sentence or what they're reading. You know, that's where they make people think they're stupid. You're not stupid. You've just never been taught the definitions of these words. And I don't know any person alive that knows the entire dictionary by heart, that knows every single definition of every single word. So who's doing this? Again, it points to the spirit element behind these things, the wickedness in high places. They know all these words. They know all these meanings. They're not the same as us. And this is how they get around. It's just like lawyers in court. It's all a word game. You know? Why do you think all these politicians are lawyers? Because they know this word game. They know this is how we're being deceived. And, and how, how it's plain, plainly written in front of us. And we don't even know what it means. I mean, it's all deception. And I hope this helps you guys. Um, if you have anything for me, I appreciate the comments. Like I said, I didn't want to do this video... I just felt like I had to, and the only thing that helped me do it was I heard someone say at one time that God usually uses people, you know, that aren't the, the brightest or the best to emphasize that it wasn't from that person. It was truly from him. So that made me feel a little better because I absolutely know I'm not the brightest and I'm not the best and I'm not the smartest. I'm not, you know, I'm just a regular person, you know, who wanted to know the truth. I prayed one time to God for him to show me the truth. And if he was real to show me, and I just wanted to know, and I started learning everything since then. It's been amazing. It's been three or four years. I study every day. Um, I want to know. And I think this was also a little reward for, for how 
you know, many hours I've logged in to learn the truth and how badly I want to know. I, I thought he gave this to me, and I haven't seen it anywhere else, but I, I urge you to pass this on, you know, and, and to think about it, not just to dismiss it, because it, ver it really is important. Look at these words. I mean, it proves the validity of all the Bible itself. I mean, it's showing you that these every single word was chosen. And the Bible had how many different authors? Over 40 different, 40 different authors of these books? 66 books? And all these words were perfectly chosen, and every definition perfectly fits for every word in multiple ways? Maybe a man penned these books. Maybe men penned these books, but they are not the author of these books. It is God himself. And that's why these other versions, they try to trick you. Like the NIV, I think it's missing like 36,000 words. Well, you see how important words are? You change one word, you're changing multiple meanings and multiple definitions. God picked each word to be in its place for a specific reason. So, you know, anyone with the Hebrew root stuff, you know, it, it's not, it's just correction. I've been corrected on different things. We're here to help each other. We're here to, we're here to, you know, encourage each other. And I've been shown so many things and I hope I just help, you know, some people with this. I think it's amazing. It's been hidden in front of us our whole lives. And God showed this to me, to give to you. And uh, God bless you, everyone. I hope this helps you. And uh, just check it out. Look for yourself. Look, pray about it. And uh, any word. Like I said, I looked at the word tree. Now I looked at the word angel. All these words, they have so many meanings. Read them all. Go down the list and really think about them. God bless you. Have a great day.